Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Tianxiang Zhao, a third-year PhD student from the Pennsylvania State University. Today, I'm going to present our work exploring age entanglement for node classification, which is connected with the guidance of my two advisors, Dr. Xiang Zhang and Dr. Su Hao Wang. So, in this work, we studied a problem that in real world, really, the ages in graphs are formed due to different factors, and each of these factors give the carry a certain type of relation. However, although that we can see that the relations across those ages are different, these factors are usually concealed in the graph formation process, like due to the graph extraction, usually the semantics carried by each of these age types are missed. And here as an example from the social graph, Domain. From the left is the original raw data, which you can see that the ages will usually carry some different relations. Like the relations that like show that they are their relatives, or like they are colleagues, or like they share some similar tastes in the in certain movies, which could make them be friends or like them follow each other. However, due to the graph formation process, usually the extracted graph. We only we can only know that there are edges among them, but we don't know like uh, what semantics or relations are carried by each of the age. And uh, currently, we know that uh, the most popular many popular graph learning methods they are, they would take all the, those edges in a given graph as equal. Like we know that uh, some popular variants of the genes like the GCN, the graph stage, or the GIN. They mainly differ in the mechanism of mass aggregation from their node neighborhoods. And uh, during the mass propagation and the adaptation, they usually adopt a uniform processing on uh, all the edges of the graph. There are some methods, like the graph attention network or DCNGCN or FactGCN, they enable some graph entanglement, like they can disentangle. Disentangle one given graph to multiple different uh, to multiple different factor graphs with each graph corresponds to one certain factor, or like they can learn an attention distribution on the given edges to do some certain certain sorts of entanglement. However, all those methods they depend on the automatic learning, like they couldn't provide any external supervision on how to disentanglement. How to how to detangle, how to capture different factors from the given graph. Therefore, in this work, we focus on the problem about how to facilitate the graph learning by automatically conduct the easy entanglement and provide a set of pretext tasks to help it do this detanglement task. Like again, as the previous given example. We want to know like, whether we can design a certain set of self sovereign tasks to help us automatically discover to automatically classify the given edges into different groups and conduct the, the noisy propagation in a uh, easy groups aware manner. And here we focus on the task on the classification, and uh, below is the formal definition of this task. And for the given graph, we have the node set V. We have the this matrix A and the node attributes, attributes F with a smaller share of the nodes labeled with their labels as YL. And our target is to learn a disentanglement, a disentangled edge set, which can be annotated as the ADs. And our final objective is to train, to slowly train a classifier, which takes the original graph to impose and predict the labels. And we hope that uh, we can detangle these edges as ADs that can benefit, that can facilitate this uh, prediction process. The main difficulty for this task is that uh, although we can, we can, although it's intuitive, but there are usually certain concrete factors behind the age existence. These relations, the information are missed, are usually missed, are not provided in the given graph data sets. And uh, addressing the problem, we make several observations to design some 
pretext tasks tasks to guide the, the disentanglement task. And the fourth is that uh, the union of the disentanglement of the disentangled age groups should be able to recover the original input age set. And uh, secondly, there are some we think like uh, like there are some ages that model the intra-class interactions, like the nodes that it connects are from the same class, which we call it as the homo ages. And there are some ages which are connected nodes from different classes and model the inter-class interactions, which we call it as the hetero ages. And we think like it, this information could provide one pseudo label for the disentanglement of ages. As it is, we think it's safe to assume that these two groups of ages they would carry different semantics. And the last one, we think that uh, the factors, the structures captured by each of the age group, it should be disparate. Like we should be able to be <coughs> tell that the semantics is encoded are different across each other. Following these observations, we design a framework, DCN which is uh, contained like in each layer. It contains uh, an disentanglement module, which is designed to conduct the disentanglement and uh, separate processing of the ages. And uh, secondly, three different series of supervision tasks are applied on top of this uh, age disentanglement module based on the three heuristics, heuristics we just discussed. And uh, finally, this module can be combined, can be applied together with the various GN layers. Here, we provide an overview of this whole framework. In each GN layer, we can, in each original GN layer, we can augment it with uh, this GN framework. Like, uh, first is the input graph, which contains the nodes and the edges which have not labeled. We can first use the disentanglement module to disentangle it into various groups. Like here, we can see that there are three groups, which we call it as three channels, with each channel to encode the blue edges, which is one certain type of relations, and the green ones, and the orange ones. And uh, the running of genome will be conducted on each of these edge groups to get, to get the age aware to get the age group aware of the representations and finally the representations from all these channels will be aggregated to as the input of the next gn layer and we can see the three subservient tasks are applied on these three channels on the all those channels first is the age recovery which means the union of the agents should recover the original age and secondly the label conformity which will assume that the first half of the channels should encode the homo ages and the next, the last half of the channels should encode the hetero ages. And finally, the channel difference, which we think that the one age one, one age discriminator or the age group, age group classifier can be trained, which is a G5 to tell like which embedding is produced by each by which channel. And uh, here we will go into details about how we implement each of these components. First is the DCGN layer, which we use the attention mechanism to disentangle the age into multiple different groups. And here the A U U L I, the V and the U corresponds to the age connecting node V and the U. And the L corresponds to the L's layer, and the I corresponds to the I's channel. And the first subdivision signal, which is age recovery, we implement it by taking a an union of all the disangled genes. And here, M is the number of the channel, and we take a sum summation of them over the learned disangled age weights. And uh, we, we require that the sigmoid of the summation of the, of the ages should be able to recover the original age. So we use uh, classical age prediction laws by random sampling to balance the positive and the negative, the positive ages and the non-existent ages. And the second subdivision task, which is the level conformity, we first, <coughs> we use the first half of the channels to, as the 
homo ages, and the, the last uh, channels as the hetero ages, and we get the union of them separately to get the homo age and the hetero age estimation. Then again, we use the uh, age prediction laws to recover the homo to predict the homo ages and use uh, different laws to recover the hetero ages. And the summation of these two laws is makes up the label conformity laws. And finally, the channel difference for which we train a, a group classifier C5 parameterized by phi. And we use the generated uh, the embedding as the input. And we require this D5 to predict which channels produce this embedding. And the loss is based on the classification loss to tell like, which channel generates in this current uh, embedding. So experiments are conducted on six datasets. The Cora block, block catalog, which are two popular datasets, and uh, the Cora 4, Squirrel, Kimberly, and the IMDB, which are also popular and at the same time displays some kinds of heterophilic property. And uh, the training, validation, and the test, the split are set as two compared to Two to three to five. For the baseline, we compared with uh, five popular methods, the MLP GCN, graph and the GIN, and also vector GCN. Here, the vector GCN is selected because it also conducted conduct the disentanglement of the original graph. And the uh, two methods, which we typically designed for heterophilic ages graphs, are also compared with including the mixed hop and h 2 gcn For evaluation, we use the accuracy and the micro F score. Here, we show the main results on these six data sets by comparing our DCN with all these bit lines. Here, with this DCN base, we present we refer to the methods without three step supervision signals, just the Original just, just the vanilla DCN architecture. And we can see that across all these classes, this DCN consistently outperform the baseline methods on all these datasets with a clear margin. And uh, we also show like the, the improvements of the DCN when applied to different uh, GN backbones, like on DCN or on graph stage. And we can see like on both these. GNN layers, the TCN can improve the performance across all these protein sets. We also compare the methods with several other subsurvision tasks, like the mask attribute prediction, or the distance prediction, or the context prediction. And we can see we can see that uh, the three provided, uh, the three proposed subsurvision can benefit the TCN architecture better than all those baseline SSL tasks. Here, in this page, we show a statistical analysis on the weights of each of these three subsurvision tasks. And uh, we can see that uh, generally, the influence of the age recovery laws is uh, positive within a certain scale and further increasing it with the result in form of drop. And uh, for the labor conformity laws, Generally, we find, we find that it is uh, beneficial for the, for the task, the system task. And uh, for the channel difference loss, we find that it is relatively, the curve is relatively smooth. And uh, like it, it also is like, positive within a scale, and for increasing it with the resulting performance drop. And we further realize the correlation coefficient which among those detangle the ages by comparing the, <coughs> the ages learned by each of these channels. And we can see that uh, first, the correlation, there are clearly two groups being detangled, two groups, the first four and the last four, they are highly different. It just shows that they successfully learn, capture the homo ages and the, and the hetero ages separately. Then within each group, we can further see like uh, some of the channels are, uh, for some of the 
channels are correlated better with each other, the, while some of the channels are not that related to each other. So you can see that we can observe a clear block-like structure of those disangled, disangled ages. So for recap, in this work, we want to study how to facilitate the graph learning by automatically learning the latent durations behind the ages. And uh, we designed the CGN framework along with three subscription tasks to help the disentanglement of ages. And experiments show like uh, this framework, which can separately processing the ages and, and disentangling them, can improve the downstream notification task. Okay, thank you.